what's up guys welcome to the video tutorial for the learning land on c++ programming so in this tutorial we're gonna learn something about the operator overloading so in a normal uh, programming you know when we create the variables for example let's say integer variables uh, a and b and you know this a and b are are containing some values let's say 10 and b equal to 20 so at that time you know if you want to do any normal operations like plus or minus or multiplication or division what you guys need to do is you guys need to write a plus b and you know a star or a multiply b you know like that but can we do the same thing with the custom objects that we create in our program the answer is no we can't that's because you know these operators are not defined to work with our customly built objects so to make this operator to work with our custom built operators you know the c++ offers us one of the most powerful feature in programming which is called operator overloading so this operator overloading is nothing but making the basic operators available in c++ to work with our custom built objects so in C++ we can overload most of the operators so that they perform special operations relative to the classes that we create. And when an operator is overloaded none of its original meanings are lost. Instead the type of objects it can apply to is expanded or you know you know when we overload these operators in our program you know we can use them with these basic types just like the way we were using before and we can also use them with the objects that we create from the classes so after overloading the appropriate operators we can use the objects in expressions in just the same way that we use the c++ built-in data types so now in c++ to overload the operators we're gonna create something called operator functions An operator function defines the operations that the overloaded operator will perform relative to the classes upon which it will work an operator function is created using the keyword operator which I'm gonna explain you know while writing that program in this tutorial and this operator functions can be either members or non members of a class if it is a non-member then that operator function most commonly is the friend function of their class and the way operator functions are written differs between member and non-member functions and uh, which we're gonna learn in the upcoming tutorials all right let's get started let's begin with an example so here in this tutorial just to demonstrate the operator overloading or how to overload the operators we're gonna create a class and let's call it as marks and this class is gonna have a couple of private properties and let's say int internal marks int mark and then we're gonna say int ext mark or external mark all right the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna define the public access specifier and also you know this internal mark and external mark are the private members of this class mark you know the default access specifier is the private when we not specify that and then in this public block we're gonna have a default constructor and let's say marks and we're gonna initialize this internal mark and external mark to a value of zero so it's gonna be int mark equal to zero and ext mark and it's gonna be equal to zero all right now next we're gonna build another constructor which is gonna take the values and it's gonna initialize these two members so I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it here in the next line and this constructor is gonna take two parameters so it's gonna be in and im internal mark and int em or external mark so here we're gonna store the internal mark and then the external mark so it's gonna be internal mark equal to im and external mark equal to em all right now we have a class called marks and then we have two members 
called internal mark and external mark and we have two constructors one is a default constructor you know which is gonna initialize these two members to a value of zero and we have another constructor which is gonna take the values and store that values in this class members and the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna build a method you know which is gonna display the values so let's call it as display and here we're just gonna use the C out statement so it's gonna be C out and it's gonna be end mark and uh, let's end this line and in the next line we're gonna print the ext or the external mark and let's end this line all right now we have a class and the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna overload the plus operator so to overload the plus operator in our program we need to use the operator method or the method which contains the code that should be executed you know when we overload the operator so here to define the operator method or the op operator function we need to write the return type so in this case what we're gonna do is we're gonna create two objects from this class marks and let's say m1 and uh, m2 and we need to pass the values let's say 10 and 20 for this m1 and for this m2 we're gonna pass 30 comma 40 all right so in this tutorial what we want to do is we want to overload the plus operator and we want to make it to work with this m1 and m2 objects and uh, we're gonna make marks m3 and equal to m1 plus m2 to make this one you know this plus operator should be overloaded and this operator should return an object of type marks and that's why in this case the return type of our operator function is gonna be an object of type marks and that's why it's gonna be marks and then the keyword operator and then which operator you want to overload you have to specify that which is plus in this case and then a pair of parentheses and then we need to specify the parameters taken by this operator here we're gonna say it's gonna take parameters of type marks you know the same class and let's say yum next we need to define this operator function or this operator method body so here you know this method is gonna return an object of this class marks that's why let's create a temporary object and let's say marks temp and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the values to the members internal mark and external mark for this object temp so it's gonna be temp dot internal mark equal to what we want is we want to store the mark of the current object which is internal mark plus the mark of this past object which is m dot internal mark and then we want to store the external marks also that's why it's gonna be temp dot external mark equal to the external mark or the value stored in this external mark of this the current object which is ext mark plus m dot ext mark all right then we're gonna return this temp so it's gonna be return temp all right now we have overloaded this plus operator and now you know this plus operator can take two objects of the class marks and here it's gonna return m1 plus m2 and that will be stored in this m3 so just to demonstrate that i'm gonna call the display method from this object m3 so it's gonna be m3 dot display so now i'm gonna save this i'm gonna build and run this program all right now you guys can see we got 40 and 60. this 40 is the internal mark and this 60 is the external marks that's because 10 plus 30 this 10 
plus 30 which is the internal mark of m1 plus m2 is equal to 40 which is the internal mark of this m3 and then 20 plus 40 which is the external mark of this m1 and m2 which is equal to 60 which is the external mark of the m3 so here this operator overloading is similar to overloading the functions but here you know we are just making this operator to work with more objects and here you know when you overload the operator it doesn't need to return the object of this class where we are overloading it can return any values so here you know just for the demonstration purpose we have returned an object of this class marks and most importantly you know this definition of this operator functions or the statements inside this operator function is going to depend on your program what type of class you are making how you want to overload your operator to work with the class objects so it all depends on the type of program you are writing so here you know just for the demonstration purpose we have built this program and the last thing that i want you guys to teach you is you know we have called this m1 plus m2 here and you know here you know we have passed only one parameter so when our operator function or an operator method is a member function you know the first parameter will be automatically passed so here you know this m1 will be automatically passed as the current object and then and we're just specifying the second object here you know this m all right if we are writing this operator function as a friend function you know at that time we need to specify the two parameters you know which we're gonna learn in the upcoming tutorials so this is it guys this is about the introduction to operator overloading in C++ and also how to overload the plus operator so thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial